Hello. Today, I want to speak with you about forgiveness. And not just about forgiveness and being forgiven, but about forgiving others. Let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, oh God, Father, I ask you to say, oh Father, to use me as your vessel, oh God. Use me as your vessel, oh God, to speak, teach, preach your word, oh God. Help me to tell the people today, oh Father, that for them, not just they have been forgiven so that they should forgive others also, God. That no matter what they're going through, what people have done to them, they should still forgive, oh God, because you have forgiven us. And you paid the ultimate price on that cross. In Jesus' mighty holy name, amen and hallelujah, amen. Now, to talk about forgiveness, to talk about how we should forgive others, we must first know how we were forgiven. Jesus died on the cross for you and I. Every sin, past, present and future that we're ever going to commit or have committed, he has already paid the price on that cross 2,000 years ago. He bridged the gap between God and us. So now we can go to God. We can approach the throne of grace boldly and ask for mercy in our time of need. Now, because Jesus is that bridge, he bridged that gap has forgiven us for all of our sins. Now, Jesus also said, pick up your cross and follow me, meaning that we we must pick up our cross and follow him. We must follow in his footsteps. And that means to forgive. We must follow in his footsteps and forgive. It says in Psalm 103, verse 12, it says, as far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. As far as the east is from the west. The east and west never meet. That is how far he's removed our transgressions from us. We will never meet our transgressions again. Once we are forgiven, it's done. It's a done, sealed deal. That is what Psalms is saying here right now. That once the east and west never ever meet. East and West never touch. There's not a line which says, here is East and here is West. That is how far God has removed our transgressions from us. They never touch. We never meet again. We never meet our transgressions again. It's a darn deal. It's sealed. Once it's forgiven, it's forgiven. It's brushed off the slate. It's a completely new plate. But the problem with us humans is that we don't forget things like that. We remember things. We hold grudges. The human mind wants to keep that emotion, the negativity, because our hearts don't want to let something that easy just slide off. We want the person to be punished, to pay, to get revenge. But I'm telling you today that if God can let the sins of this world The horrible sin, if he can forgive that, then how much more can you forgive others? How much more can you forgive maybe someone that uh, your partner's cheated on you? How much more can you forgive your parents for maybe not treating you right, not raising you right, not giving you the essential needs that you needed? Why can you not forgive that colleague that took your position? That badmouthed you behind your back? How can you not forgive them? And God has taken every and all sins, the worst of humankind, and received them on the cross and forgiven them. Stephen said when he was getting stoned, stoned by the Pharisees, Stoned by the Sadducees, stoned by the religious people. You know what he said? God, forgive them, for they do not know what they do. God, forgive them. The people that is sending you to your grave early, sending him to his grave. Not even him dying naturally, but them basically murdering him, killing him. And you know what he says? He says, 
God forgive them for they do not know what they're doing. That is what I find. Is that once God has touched your heart, once the Holy Spirit has actually entered your heart, something has to completely change. Your perspective changes. You no longer see with that human fleshy mindset of that, oh, this person has done this to me, so they must pay. But you know that their soul, poor helpless soul, just committing these sins to fulfill their desires. You see people in a completely different light. Your perspective has changed. Your perspective has changed. When you forgive others, it should be done. Once you forgive them, it's done. There's no more looking them bad in the wrong way. It's no more of giving them the side eye after you've, they've confessed to you, after they've confessed to you, the brethren. Because God says that what you, you must also confess what you did in public, what you did in secret, you must confess it in public also to your brethren. So if they confess it to you, if they confide in you and tell what they've done, it's not now to look at them in a wrong way, in a weird eye, you know, or you're cautious of them, you're wary of them now because they've committed this sin. Because they told you, they trusted you. You don't look where Once you forgive someone, it's a clean slate. There should be no more hatred, revenge, all these different things. Because this will just lead to you sinning and then you having to be forgiven. For you having to repent. And then what? You want forgiveness. You want repentance. You want to be, you want, to re- you want forgiveness. You want to be forgiven. You want mercy. But how can you receive mercy if you do not also give mercy? How can you reap what you not have not sown? If you haven't sown mercy in your life, if you haven't sown forgiveness in your life, then how would you expect to receive forgiveness? Do you expect to receive mercy? Do you expect to receive grace? Jesus forgave people. He forgave the Pharisees for their blasphemous and evil words. He forgave the people. For them putting him on that cross. He forgave the lame man of his sins. And he was able to walk again. Forgiveness. When you forgive, everything changes. The disease that has been using your unforgiveness as something to cling onto can no longer cling so many things change. In 1 John 9, 1 John 1, 9, it says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from unrighteousness. God wants us to be righteous. And the only way for us to be righteous is to not sin, to not be unrighteous. And sinning. He's being unrighteous and God wants us to be righteous. So he will surely and justly, there's not a doubt in heaven and or in earth, they will not forgive you. The only sin that can never be forgiven is the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. But that is a whole different level and a whole other topic that I'm not going to go into. Because when you blaspheme the Holy Spirit, you're not just blaspheming the Holy Spirit, but also blaspheming God's Spirit. You're blaspheming His creation. You're blaspheming everything, His own nature, You're not just blaspheming his own nature. You're blaspheming everything that he's created. Everything that he's done. You're secreting his work. You're damaging his work. Because the Holy Spirit is involved in everything. Every part of the Bible, the Holy Spirit is involved. So when you blaspheme the Holy Spirit, you're just not blaspheming the Holy Spirit, but you blaspheme Jesus. You blaspheme God. You blaspheme the earth, the creation, Everything you could possibly ever think of, you blaspheme because the Holy Spirit is involved in everything and anything. And also Ephesians 1 verse 7 says, In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, in according with the riches of God's grace. In Jesus we have redemption through his blood. Through his blood we have redemption. So God has given us redemption, given us grace. 
then why can we not give it to others? The, so let me tell you the one reason why you cannot forgive, that you just keep on holding that grudge, is because you don't have love. I tell you now, you don't have love. Forgiveness is intertwined with everything. It's intertwined with your peace, your control, your self-control, your generosity, your kindness, your goodness, your faithfulness, and most importantly, your love. Because if you truly love, if you truly have love, then you'll be able to forgive anyone. But it's because you can't truly love. No wound is ever too deep that love cannot heal. Love is the most powerful wound healer. It's the most powerful type of forgiveness. Because you can just forgive someone because, oh, I have to forgive. Or you can forgive someone because you love them. Not the person or who they are, but you love them because they're God's creation. Because they are in the image of God. Because they are your fellow brethren, your fellow human being. That's why you love them. And if you can have that love, even a tiny bit of being like God's love, then you can forgive anything and anyone. But it's because us humans, we don't have the ability. We lack the discipline, the motivation and the courage to love. Even through the most detestable things. If we can love, then we can forgive. That is the true reason why you have unforgiveness in your heart. Not because what they did was so bad, was so wrong. But because you cannot love them. That is the true reason. It says, John 3, 16, it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. God sent Jesus to die on the cross because he loved us. And that's why he forgave us. Stevenson. Stephen, sorry, not Stevenson. Stephen. Forgave the Pharisees, Sadducees, and Saul slash Paul. He forgave them because, and I tell you, because inside he loved them, just like God loved them. That love that Stevenson showed changed Saul's life, became Paul, and became one of the greatest missionaries. To spread the Christian gospel after Jesus. Jesus died on the cross for you and I. Because for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whoever believes in him shall not perish. But have everlasting life. Because he has has now given us everlasting life. Everlasting life. He died on the cross and has now given us everlasting life. And that is only for those who believe it. In him. So today, if you want to believe that Jesus is our Lord, is Jesus is your Lord and Savior, if you want to believe that He died on the cross for you and I and rose again on the third day, and you want to receive His forgiveness and His new gift, and His gift for us to be anew again, to be washed away with His blood. Out with the old and in with the new. Repeat this prayer after me. If you're touching on your heart as well, just repeat this prayer after me. Say with me now. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, to God, I repent of my sins. Lord Jesus, forgive me now. And I receive you now as my Lord and my Savior from this day forward. In Jesus' mighty holy name. Amen and hallelujah. Amen. You are the one lost sheep that has now been found. The one lost coin that has now been found. Your name is written in the last book of life. Amen and hallelujah. Amen. And now, I recommend you reading the book of John. Such an amazing book for newborn again believers. And now, as I told you, How many of you prayed from this last week, Tuesday, to this Tuesday? How many of you prayed from the 27th of September to the 4th? Yes, the 4th of October. How many of you obeyed and listened to what I asked you? How many of you? 
And that word changes. That word changes. But how many of you listened? So today, I want you to listen. Not to me. No, don't listen to me. In the sense of, don't listen just to one human earthly figure. Don't put all your trust in a human earthly figure. But put your trust in God. Today, I want you to practice your obedience by just listening to God and doing what he says. Just listen to God and do what he says. I shouldn't even have to tell you this to be doing. They should be doing this automatically every day. And if you do, keep on doing it. But I'm telling you from this Tuesday to next Tuesday, even though from this Tuesday to for the rest of your life, just listen to God. Make time so you can hear his voice and obey him. And this has been Forgiveness Goes Both Ways. Thank you for listening and have a blessed week.